guitar restoration and deep clean. This guitar was bought whilst making the video on things to look for when buying an acoustic guitar. I also used this guitar in the video how to strip stickers from a guitar. I'll put the links to these videos in the description below. The first thing I'm going to do to restore this guitar is strip the stickers. Now there is another video to where we tested the various different uh, solvents. We came up with either white spirit, I don't know if you can see that if it's in focus, don't think it is, never mind, and acetone. And these two guys did a really nice job of uh, stripping the stickers. Obviously you peel off as much as you can uh, with uh, anything that comes to hand. I'm using my actual thumbnail. Um, and the more you get off the better obviously. Uh, but you're always left with this um, dried on stickiness uh, from years and years of the stickers being there. Uh, biggest issue with this guitar, which um, I don't think we can solve, is the fact that these stickers have been so long they've discoloured the wood underneath. Uh, or the wood is discoloured in the sunshine, but this small area is where the stickers are haven't. So let's get this on here as well. So I'm using the acetone, uh, the two white spirit and the acetone, which we came to in the end. I, I prefer the acetone because it seems to evaporate and leave nothing behind. So it's a far cleaner finish in the end. There we go. So I'll just strip the rest of the stickers off this and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Uh, next stage then is remove all the strings. Uh, the strings are pretty knackered and because it's a big deep clean we're doing uh, there's no point messing around and changing one string at a time so I'm going to get wire cutters and cut the strings off this is a big sign time saver looks brutal I know but it is a good thing there we go so now we can get at the fingerboard the neck uh, Trush rod if it needs adjusting various points of the guitar uh, and do a proper deep clean uh, ready for restringing so let's go about that now I'll just get rid of the remaining strings whilst you've got the strings off you can have a good look at the frets and see how much frets wears there these are really good uh, they've hardly been touched in fairness this is one of those guitars that's been bought by someone with the intention of learning guitar and then just being left aside uh, with the uh, exception of the slight damage due to the stickers, it's actually in very good condition. Uh, so the next step is we will actually clean up the fingerboard uh, and the frets and make it look as nice as possible, but also treat the wood, which is a little dry, and it does have some slight watermarks uh, in it, but nothing, nothing major. You can see there. A great thing to treat the uh, fingerboard with is almond oil. Uh, you can't see that because it's been soaked up with the actual almond oil itself. But almond oil replaces some of the wood's natural oils. Uh, it makes the wood look a little darker than it is once it's dried out. But because it replaces some of the natural oils, it actually keeps the wood in nice condition and it helps keep dirt out. Uh, it prevents, on very old guitars, it prevents them cracking. Uh, I learnt this trick from a violin restorer who was restoring very old, very valuable violins and he would use the almond oil just to treat the wood enough to prevent the, uh, the wood from cracking uh, on a very old instrument. This instrument isn't old enough for that, however the almond oil is still a very good treatment for the fingerboard and it actually makes the wood look nice and fresh. Uh, it helps prevent those just those little dark bits where your finger, where it absorbs your the thing the grease from your fingers. It uni it makes the neck a uniform colour. So we're nearly done there. Don't put too much on. Uh, too much would be bad. Just enough to give the surface a bit of a darker shiny look uh, any access wipe it off uh, there shouldn't be any problems with this with your skin because it is actually they use it as a skin treatment uh, 
it's actually good for your skin so no worries there there we go i'm just pushing it around the frets so there's no obvious parts i've missed that makes the neck look nice just a bit around this And like I say, not only does it make the instrument look nicer, it maintains the wood, keeps it in good condition. There we go. To remove any minor scratches, we can use teacup. Uh, this sounds a bit strange. It's a car product. It's a the, the thing is to be careful how you use it. It's a very fine abrasive. Uh, it's a liquid abrasive and it will take just the surface of the varnish off, very thin uh, layer. However, if there's anywhere where this scratches, I'm just going to try it on this, these lighter areas. It may not make any difference, but it might. Let's just try it. One of these things, because it's a very light abrasive, it's actually the rubbing action that does the job, so you have to uh, use it for quite a while for it to make an impact and that's not really making a difference looking at it no. uh, you leave it to dry and then wipe it off uh, however we do have a couple of areas of small scratches uh, the head's been all lent against the wall or even banged I'm bring it over can we get that in the frame you can see here we've got some scratches which have either been done somebody's knocked the guitar or lent it against the wall the wrong way or uh, something like that and th th it looks like it's got white paint embedded in it this is the ideal place where the teacup comes in so let's try that now i reckon it will take it off there you go there you go that's brought that up lovely around the corner let's we'll see It's brought it off perfectly. And that's just the teacup rubbing in uh, just where the white is. Uh, and it's brought it all up nicely. Uh, there's no, no other place on this I can see that has got scratches on it of that sort of variety. Let's just turn over the headstock and have a look at the back there. No, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. A useful tip I find for these bold back guitars is uh, using um, black trim wax. Again, it's a car product, would you believe? But basically, the back of your uh, ball back guitar, uh, ovation style or whatever, it's basically the trim of a car in its construction. So if you get that and wipe it in and then clean it off, you'll see it brings up the whole back of the guitar Pretty much to showroom condition and uh, because of the nature of the thing it this this stuff actually protects the the, the shine uh, protects it from water damage and so on so uh, I just go through the whole back of the guitar with this uh, rubbing it on and then wiping it off with a, a damp cloth uh, sorry with a dry cloth um, but the, the the finished effect is very good uh, I like to say it protects the guitar so I'll just continue this. Uh, don't get it in the hole of the jack plug socket if you've got one there. Uh, that wouldn't be a good thing. And if you get it on any of the white or any of the trim, wipe it off straight away. Spot on. Right, I just wipe that off now with a, a dry cloth. And uh, it's the black plastic area done. And it will come up nicely. Again, making sure anything that goes on the white is wiped off. As a final touch, I would uh, use either furniture polish or car polish to bring this up nicely. You may wonder why would you use car polish? Well, 
that the varnish is basically the same stuff as uh, car paint and the car polish has all sorts of protection in it uh, which definitely benefits the guitar. Now uh, you'll notice here something I've noticed uh, whilst I've been working is that this is actually loose the rosette so I'll, I'll have to glue that down eventually so but first we'll finish the clean up so it's ready to have new strings right the last stage of this now is the um, restringing the guitar I'm going to use these uh, Jumbo King size 9s uh, because these are my favourite Uh, first thing we have to do is uh, sort them out into the sizes. So the thinnest is the smallest number, as in 009, because these are fractions. So 0013 is bigger, 18 is bigger, 26 is bigger again, 38 and 48. They're all in order. So the thinnest is obviously the top E string, the thinnest E string. So uh, we're actually looking at the guitar upside down here. You can see this is where the top E string will be. And on this particular type of guitar, it, it just threads through a hole at the end, which is very simple to do. So let's just zoom in close to that so you can see it. Right, I've turned the guitar around so you can see more clearly where we need to thread the string. There we go. And because it's the other way around, this hole now is the top E string. So what we have to do is go from the back here and the string goes through the wood and out here and over the, the, the bridge, sorry. So, I don't know if you can see that uh, in through the back. Pushing out, this string is very small so it's hard to see on camera. And we've got it, we pull it through. There we go. And I line them up so that they're uh, the tidy but you don't necessarily have to do this so that's that side done so now we're over the other side of the guitar and we pull the string down and we want to thread it through the nut this white bit here so i'm holding it there and through this tuning peg here now, because it's the thinnest string, I'm going to take it round one, one more time and put it through again. But you don't have to do this, and it can actually be a pain when you come to restring it. But, but for some reason, I feel it necessary on this guitar. There we go. And then we start tuning it. Now, important thing to note here is that the string should always go the same direction around that way around that way so the next string will go around that way from the center around that way so on this side it's going to be around this way same around this way around this way so all the strings will come from the center this is important because if you put the strings on the wrong way when you tune the guitar you'll be tuning the wrong way so rather than tuning up you'll be tuning down and when you want to choose down you'll tune up and this could link, link to broken strings and so on so you don't have to tune this all the way you just tighten it up so you get at least a reasonable amount of pressure uh, that'll do for now uh, so then i'll go and do uh, the other strings the same way in the description below there are links to more detailed videos of how to change the strings. So I've done all the strings uh, going from the thinnest through to the thickest except one and this is the very th thickest and I'll show you this one as well because of the thickness of the string it's more clear to see what's going on. Now it's something that I find useful at this end when trying to thread the string and that is just put a nick in the end the reason I do this is just bent it slightly. When we push this through the hole here, yeah, there we go. If we bend it slightly, it helps it lift over the bridge there. So if you don't bend it, it can be a bit awkward to get over that bridge. So pull that through now. 
again I line that up I like it to be neat and just pull it tight there we go that's that, that final string there so now we'll go over to the other end and have a look what we can do there right here we are at the other end of the guitar we just get this string thread it through pull it up take up much of the slack then start bringing it in now we need to make sure that it's on the appropriate slot for the string in the nut and that's this one here so i hold it down in the nut and tighten it up until it just takes up all the slack the next thing we'll do though we can chop them first but i would tune it first tune the guitar up and then we chop these down uh, or you can coil them up if you prefer but initially, when you chop them down, I would leave at least an inch, maybe two, because they can slip through the ferrule. And if this happens, if you've cut it too far, you'll lose the string. You won't be able to re-thread it. So leave it an inch or so to allow for slippage. Then once this, the strings have settled in a week's time, or depends how much you play, uh, a couple of days even, you can cut it right back and just leave a little short uh, amount of string. So I'll tune the guitar now, and then it will be finished.